guys, I'm Richard Oldner. Welcome to the channel. It's time for part four of my small block Ford cylinder head test where we tested 25 or 30 different heads. I'm going to go ahead and put a link up here to part one. You can check it out with a 306. Part two had a 333 stroker. And in part four, we stepped things up to a 393 stroker. Check it out right here. And now here in part four, I've stepped things up to a 427 inch high compression, big roller cam, stroke 351 Windsor, because we want to be able to take advantage of everything that all of these CNC ported heads have to offer. Okay, guys, who's ready to get down to business on the final episode of my big cylinder head test? We're talking about all the cool CNC ported heads. We've got heads from Pro Top Line. We have a set of CNC ported high port heads from TFS. We have a set of CNC ported Dart 225 heads. We have a set of CNC ported Victor Jr. heads from Edelbrock. We have a set of Kazi Jegs heads. We have a set of Airflow Research 225 heads. And we're going to finish up with a set of Twisted Wedge R heads from TFS. But before we do that, let's take a look at our test motor. It was a 427 inch stroker motor using a big Dart aftermarket block. We had a four inch steel crank. We had six 125 forged rods. We had a set of forged flat top pistons that we had to put even more valve reliefs in. They were, they were multi valve relief pistons because we had a set of variety of different kind of cylinder heads that required different valve reliefs. We had a fairly big camshaft. This was a solid roller. In fact, we tried a couple of different camshafts in this motor to find out which one was going to work best. But in the end, we stepped up to a big comp solid roller that was 739 lift. It was a 274, 282 degree duration at 50. That's right. You heard it right. And 108 degree lobe separation. It's so fairly tight. We know it was making good power. We had uh, a set of, uh, you know, spring package set up. So all of these would work well. We had titanium retainers. We had a 195 install height on most of these things. We put a big Super Victor intake manifold on here with a 1050 race demon. One of the things that we were saddled with on this combination, we had roller rockers and stuff on it. But one of the things that I think hurt this combination is that we only had inch and three quarter headers. Now, all of these combinations with this big a motor making this kind of power and compression and stuff definitely would have been better with an inch and seven eighths or even a two inch set of headers. But this is what we had. So this is what we tested. And the most powerful of these combinations stepped up power to a pretty impressive 1.562 horsepower per cubic inch. So all of the others, while we were taking a look at them, we went to the 306, the 331 and the 393. We improved the specific output of each one of these motors and ended up here. What about the results? Let's check it out. Normally when we run these value results, I provide the least amount of power first, and then we step up in succession to the most amount of power to, you know, build suspense. But I'm going to jump right in and give you the most powerful set of cylinder heads we tried on our 427, and for a good reason. The reason is that I did not run this wild cammed 427 small block stroker with a set of stock E7TE heads. As entertaining as it might have been, it would have taken a lot to set the heads up for that kind of cam lift and stuff. And it just would have been silly, basically. So I needed something to compare all of the other heads to. And we're going to compare them to the most powerful to see how far down everybody was compared to the set of heads that made the most amount of power. So let's jump right in, get to our Trick Flow Twisted Wedge R heads on our 427, that produced 666.6, .6, 667 horsepower, and 572 foot-pounds of torque. You can see good curve, made good power. Now our Twisted Wedge R heads had a 62cc chamber, because the chambers varied, as we'll see from these different heads. It had a 12.13 to 1 static compression ratio. The, the peak flow on the Trick Flow heads, they offered 342 CFM, on the intake and 258 CFM on the exhaust. The intake port measured 225 cc's and they were equipped with a 20816 valve package. Interestingly enough, the Twisted Wedge R heads actually wanted a degree and a half or so less timing than the other heads in this group. Now let's get to the other heads and see how they compare to these trick flows. Now that we've covered the power results of our 427 equipped with the TFS Twisted Wedge R heads, we can take a look at the other ones and now we're going to go in <laughs> ascending order to build a little drama as I said. And our first set of heads came from Pro Top Line and actually these were included only because in this group anyway, they were included because I got them right at the end of this test. I actually would have included these in the group three because they were labeled and uh, they were as cast first of all where the rest of these were all CNC ported and they were labeled with 215 cc uh, 
intake port, which they actually measured 223, and they flowed pretty well despite being as cast. They flowed 309 CFM and 230 on the exhaust. They featured 63 cc combustion chambers, a static compression ratio of right at 12 to 1, 11.99 is what is calculated at. And here are the power results of the Pro Top Line head. You can see they didn't make anywhere near as much power as the Twisted Wedge R head. They made a peak of 603 horsepower at 6,600 and 554 foot pounds at 5,000. And, you know, they did flow about 30 or so CFM, uh, 30, 30 to 35 CFM less than the Twisted Wedge R heads. And the Twisted Wedge R heads, you know, have a really efficient combustion chamber as demonstrated by the fact that they wanted and, and made best power with less timing. But these were the pro top lines, again, included only because they just came in right while I was doing this final test on this whole group of one, two, three, and four uh, small block cylinder heads. So now let's take a look at a set of ported TFS high port heads. The next set of heads run on our 427 test motor came from the guys at Ford Performance Solutions and they were a set of CNC ported, the head that they have a program for, TFS high port heads. And we'll go ahead and take a look at the power output offered by those FPS ported TFS high port heads. You can see they flowed fairly well. They flowed 316 CFM on the intake and 246 on the exhaust. They had a 64 cc chamber tied with the Kazi heads for the largest chamber. They, the compression ratio was 11.86 to 1. These things had a 2100 1.625 valve package on it. And equipped with those heads, it produced 623 horsepower at 7100 and 549 foot-pounds of torque at 5100 RPM. So you can see the heads did fairly well, and the CNC porting applied to the high port heads brought the as-cast flow rates up pretty dramatically. But the, these particular high ports, I, I really expected the high ports to be a little closer to the Twisted Wedge R head, but remember, this test was run... <laughs> now decades ago <laughs> so it was quite a while ago and i'm sure guys have really good really good programs for the high port heads in fact it might be that the high port head uh is one of the better inline valve heads for the for the windsor applications i've seen they make quite a bit of power but now let's take a look and see what happened when we ran dart 225 heads now it's time to take a look at the offering from Dart, and that came in the form of their CNC ported 225 heads, which we've run a number of times on other applications. They've worked fairly well. The Dart 225s actually measured 220 cc's on the intake port. They featured a 20816 valve package. They had a 62 cc combustion chamber, which means we had a 12.13 static compression ratio. And run with the Dart heads. You can see they didn't quite equal, obviously, the trick flow heads, but they did produce 627 horsepower at 6,500 and 564 foot-pounds of torque. And they did well. The Dart 225 heads, as I said, have always worked well. We've tested them on a lot of different things. Um, they weren't quite the equal of the trick flow head, but they did very well. So now let's take a look and see what happened when we ran a set of CNC ported Victor Jr. heads from Edelbrock. Our next set of heads came from Edelbrock, and they were the Edelbrock Victor Juniors, although like the high port heads, these are also treated to full CNC porting, a CNC program from the guys at Ford Performance Solutions, and they flowed well, 314 CFM and 240 on the exhaust, which put, put them a little bit in terms of flow, better, a little bit better on the intake than the dart, but a little bit worse on the, on the exhaust. They had a 12.2 to 1 static compression ratio. They also had a 62 cc combustion chamber and they had a 20816 valve package. Again, something that they shared with the dart heads and run with these heads. We'll go ahead and take a look at the power curve here. They did fairly well. They produced 641 horsepower at 7,000 RPM and 559 foot pounds of torque at 5,400 RPM. You could see as we go up and up, we're getting a little bit closer and a little bit closer to the power output offered by those TFSR heads. The Victor Juniors with the CNC program from the guys at FPS did a pretty good job. Now let's take a look at what happened when we ran the Kazi heads. 
This one was one of the surprising tests in all of these cylinder heads, and these came from, these were the Kazi Jegs heads tested way back. In fact, I was so concerned about this, and because I know John, and I wanted to make sure that I did the test correctly, we ran his heads on the flow bench, and they flowed very well. They flowed 345 CFM, in fact, the most of any of the heads that we tested, and 242 CFM on the exhaust. They had a 210-1600 valve package, they had a 64cc chamber, so they had the lowest compression uh, shared with the high ports of 11.86. But they produced, I'll show, go ahead and show you the power curve. They just didn't make the power that I thought that they should based on everything that we had here. They made 641 horsepower and 558 foot-pounds. But I was so concerned based on the flow numbers and what I expected from these, because I know John knows how to make power. What I did was after we had run, we had already run the TFSR heads and then we'd run these Kazi heads. And I thought, well, maybe something's wrong with the motor. So we took the Kazi heads back off and I put the trick flow heads back on and it repeated within one horsepower of the last time that we ran it. So there was nothing wrong with the motor. It was in perfect shape. Looking at this curve, I would suspect maybe that there is a valve spring issue out at the top is kind of what it looks like, but the rest of the curve should be making more power based on the uh, airflow that I got and what I expected from these heads, but that's why we test. Now let's take a look at our final set of heads and compare them to the trickle heads. Those are the 225 heads from AFR. Okay, we're taking a look at our final set of heads. These came from Airflow Research. They were 225. They had a 20816 valve package. They flowed 331 CFM and 250 on the exhaust with very good mid, you know, mid lift flow numbers. The intake port measured 226 cc, so right at 225 that they were advertising. These did have the smallest combustion chamber of the whole group. They were 57 cc, which means this was around 12.86 to one static compression. And run with our airflow heads. These actually produced the closest power to the trick flow R heads. They made 651 horsepower and 564 foot pounds of torque, although still not coming, not matching what the TFS R heads did. They did very well. And I expected them to do well in, in the past. The airflow research stuff has done well, but also because they had the smallest combustion chamber and they had the highest compression, I kind of expected them maybe to do a little better down low than the trickle heads and lose out. But again, that's why we test because only on the dyno is going to tell us what's actually going on. And that's why we ran all of these heads in all four of the groups and finished this one up with the big CNC stuff. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay, guys, what's the takeaway from this big CNC ported cylinder head test on our 427 Ford? We're, here's a couple of things I want to talk about. First of all, the inch and three quarter headers. Did we completely ruin the test? Make a comment and let me know, did we completely ruin the test by running inch and three quarter headers? But here's something to think about while you're making your comment telling you, yeah, Richard, they all need to be bigger. You held everything back. Did we hold back the heads that made less power than we did the ones that made more power? I mean, would the heads that made less power, like the pro top lines or the ported uh, high port heads, would they have made a lot more power with bigger headers when the twisted wedge R head made 667 horsepower? Those others could have made that power if they would have made that power. You see what I'm getting at? I don't know that the heads held back what happened. I think we would have seen the same kind of differences from all of them, but what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. Would the headers have hurt some more than others and not just from like maximum power standpoint? The other thing is this test is very old. <laughs> I ran this decades ago. There are a lot of different heads. There's, there's guys making lots of good programs for a lot of these. So obviously this isn't an absolute test. Every CNC ported set of whatever you choose, a high port of Victor or Victor Jr., whatever it is, there are lots of guys doing different things. And obviously those results will vary, but it does show you that different cylinder heads. And the one thing I want to point out is if you take a look at a comparison between the peak flow numbers that I gave you for each of these heads and then compare that to the power output that they made, Peak flow numbers are not really a good indicator on how well the cylinder head is going to do. Average flow is maybe a much better indicator, and we certainly saw that in this test. But that being said, which one of these heads would you choose if you're trying to build a 600 plus horsepower stroked Windsor? I'm Richard Holder. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. I'll keep testing.